Yesterday, a Jordanian truck driver shot and killed three Israeli settlers at the crossing between Jordan and the West Bank. Now the people of Jordan are celebrating and honoring this man. That might make a lot of people uncomfortable, especially Westerners and those who have been conditioned by Western propaganda to believe that only Westerners and white people are allowed to fight for freedom. But when non-Westerners do it, like Arabs and Muslims, it's considered terrorism. But let's dig into what exactly happened, why people are celebrating it, and what is the significance of this bridge. On Sunday, a 39-year-old commercial truck driver named Maher al-Jazi approached the crossing between Jordan and the West Bank, but because the West Bank is under Israeli colonization, Israel has control over the borders. He snuck a gun through the border, and when he crossed and approached the settlers, he shot and killed three of them. There are Israeli occupation forces all throughout the border, so obviously they shot and killed him right away. Now, what is the significance of this bridge? Because most people probably know nothing about it. The King Hussein Bridge, or as the colonizers call it, the Elenbi Bridge, is a symbol of Israel's violent occupation and colonization of Palestine. There are nearly 3 million Palestinians living in the West Bank. This bridge is their only connection to the outside world. It is their only means of traveling outside of the West Bank. Israel does not allow the West Bank Palestinians to have their own airport, and they're definitely not allowed to use the airport in Israel. So if these 3 million West Bank Palestinians want to travel anywhere, they have to fly out of the airport in Jordan, in Amman. First, they have to have permission from Israel to leave the West Bank. Then they have to cross all of the military checkpoints on the way to the border. Then at the bridge, they spend hours and hours in line waiting to get a stamp of approval from the Israeli customs, which can take anywhere between two hours to 12 hours, depending on the mood of the Israeli occupation soldiers. And they cross this King Hussein bridge, wait another few hours to get through the Jordanian customs, and then take another bus and taxi to the airport in Jordan. And from there, they start their journey of flying to wherever they're going. Such a long, exhausting, and inconsistent journey that most Palestinians actually make this journey a day or two before their flight to account for any delays by Israel. In some instances, it can take an entire day just to get to the airport. That is the importance of this bridge. It is literally the lifeline for more than 3 million Palestinians living in the West Bank. Now, why are people in Jordan celebrating and honoring this truck driver? The main thing you need to know is that Jordan has the largest population of Palestinian refugees in the world. There are nearly 7 million Palestinian refugees outside of Palestine, those of us who live in exile and are rejected the right to return to Palestine. Now, 3 million out of the 7 million live in Jordan. Nearly 60% of Jordan's population is originally Palestinian. So the majority of the people you see celebrating are actually Palestinian refugees or descendants of Palestinian refugees, ethnically cleansed from their lands in 1948 or 1967. Now these 3 million Palestinians mostly live in Amman or in the areas surrounding Amman, like in Baga'a or Zerga. These areas are about 45 minutes, max an hour away from the border with Palestine. And majority of these 3 million Palestinians in Jordan have never stepped foot in Palestine, despite the fact that it's less than an hour away. It's so close, you can actually see Palestine from these areas in Jordan, and most of these Palestinians have never been. Now, the driver himself is not Palestinian, he's actually Jordanian, from the Huaytaf tribe in Ma'an. But for most Arabs in this region, we don't fully recognize these countries and the borders that were drawn by the colonizers. Palestinians, Jordanians, Syrians, Lebanese, we know that we were one people at one point before the colonizers came and divided us up. So even if there weren't Palestinians in Jordan, there's still a sense of brotherhood between these lands and a general support for the Palestinian cause. So before you judge and critique the people in Jordan celebrating and honoring Maher al-Jazi, while you sit in your comfy, air-conditioned home, make sure you understand the context of how we got to where we are today and what the people in these videos have gone through. And think about all of the rights and the freedoms that these people have been stripped of.